All right, in this episode, we want to take a look at our line as an element page. So make sure that you've navigated to this page, which you can do by opening up your document, clicking on pages, and then coming down to page three and just double clicking on it. All right, and as always, if we take a look at our finish guide, this is what we're looking for to create. And if you need the specifics for these particular lines, you can always go to your um, student guide and all the specifics on how to recreate each one of these is listed here. All right, so let's get started. Move this over to the side here. And I'm going to zoom in on the top. I'm going to select my zoom tool inside the toolbar. I'm going to click and drag around the top of my document. And I'm going to close up my pages panel. All right. Now to get to your um, line tool, it's, you're going to find it over here inside your toolbar. So come over to your toolbar and work your way down. It's going to sit right below your type tool. Right there, there's the line tool. So click on it. And just like any other application with Adobe, uh, Illustrator, or Photoshop, to draw anything, you just click and drag. All right. Now notice as I drag this out, it's in freeform mode. So if I'm trying to draw a straight line, you're going to have to sort of eyeball it. Or the best thing to do, hold down the shift key. The shift key will constrain your movement and keep things straight. So similar how the shift key will keep shapes proportional, the shift key will also keep your lines straight. So just click on it and draw it out. And when you're done, let go. Now, if you draw it and deselect and you don't happen to see a line, that is probably because if you come down here, you don't have a color for your stroke. I'll give you an example. Let me switch that to a fill. If I do the exact same thing, click and drag out a line. Notice it draws a line, but when I deselect it, it doesn't show anything. That's because this particular line has a color fill of black and lines do not have fills. They only have strokes, but the stroke unfortunately has none. So I would have to swap these. So if you come up here to the arrow key, just simply swap the colors between the fill and the stroke, and there you go. All right, so I'm just gonna get rid of one of these because we only need the one. All right, so with this line drawn, let's go ahead and make sure it's the right size and locate in the right space. So according to our guide, this line has a length of 6.625. So I'm gonna click on my line to select it. Again, I'm using the selection tool. Now for your line, you're going to notice that inside your control panel or also inside your properties panel, we don't have a W or an H, so there's no width or height. Basically all we have is line, which is represented by the L line length. And so with that, we're simply going to uh, type in the number that we need for our line to be. What is the length of our line? In this particular case, it is, well, 6.625. I did an amazing job drawing that uh, without any reference. So if yours is not that length, simply highlight uh, the number inside the L and type in 6.625 and hit enter. So the next thing we want to do is we want to control the weight of the stroke. And you can do that in one of two places. Inside your control panel, you're going to find the weight of your stroke over here. Again, there's the color of your stroke. Here is the weight of it. And in order to change that, all you gotta do is highlight that number and you can type in four. Inside your properties panel, those same features are located over here. If you come down inside appearance, you'll see stroke and there's the weight right there. The next thing we need to do is assign a type and types are kind of like styles. And so in this particular case, we don't want a solid line. We want something that looks a little bit different. We want something that has a, a thick top and a thin bottom to this one particular line. So to do that, we're going to change the type in a couple different places you can find that. So inside your control panel, that will be located right here if you click the drop down. Inside your properties panel, if you come down here to appearance and stroke, that will be located over here to the right of the point value. You can also find it inside the stroke panel here by clicking on the word stroke. It'll bring up a separate panel. There it is. All right. So whichever place you decide to do it, it doesn't really matter. Just pick one, select the drop down. In this particular case, we're going to choose thick, thin. So it's thick on the top and thin on the bottom. And we're going to apply it. If I deselect, you can kind of see it's got a very thick portion up top and a thin line on the bottom. The next thing that we want to do is we want to add a triangle to this. And so just so we can see what's happening, let me see if I'm going to press down the space bar on my keyboard, which is going to temporarily switch to a hand. I'm going to scroll this over to the side because we're going to add an arrow right here on the right side of this line. So I'm going to make sure I select the line first. And inside my properties panel, again, you'll notice I have the stroke. 
I'm going to click on the word stroke to bring up the panel. And you're going to find the ability to add an arrow down here underneath the type where it says start and end. Now, if you've drawn your line from left to right, then the start will be the left side of your line and the end will be the right side. And if you don't remember how you drew the line, don't worry about it. I'll show you how you can switch that here in just a second. So in this particular case, we're going to add an arrowhead to the right of the line. And since we drew from left to right, that will be this box over here. So we're going to click the drop down and we're going to choose triangle. You can see it added a triangle at the end or an arrowhead at the end of our line. Now, below each one of these, the start and the end, you're going to notice a percentage. This allows you to control the size of that arrow. In this particular case, we want to make it a little bit smaller. So we're going to highlight this and we're going to change it to 60% and hit enter. And notice how it changed. And finally, to make sure that the line is located where it needs to be, let me close out this panel here for just a second. I'm going to switch to my hand tool over here inside the toolbar. Clicking on it allows me to drag the document with inside the window. All right, I'm going to go back to my selection tool. So with the line still selected, we just need to move it to its proper location. Now notice our reference points for this are a little bit different than what you've noticed for other objects. Since we're dealing with the line, we only basically have three reference points. The left, uh, left center, middle center, and the right center. So in this particular case, uh, we are going to select the left center reference point. Click on that. And we're going to change the X value, again, which deals with left to right. We're going to change that to 1. And then we're going to hit Enter. So basically, we're saying the left edge of this line needs to be at the 1 inch mark. And then for Y, again, which controls the up or down, we're going to change this to 0.5. So now this line sits on the left side at the one inch mark. Up and down is going to sit at the half inch mark. All right, and there's our first line. So if I deselect it, that's what we have. Now to add the next line, we could draw a new line or we could just copy the one that we have. So I'm going to select this line, the one I've already made. But instead of doing an edit, copy, and edit, paste, which you're more than welcome to do, I'm going to hold down the Alt key. Notice the that double arrow, this indicates I'm about to make a copy, and I'm going to click and drag. And as I'm dragging, I'm also going to go ahead and hold down the shift key to keep it straight to create my second line. And when I let go, there's my second line. Now, don't worry if you didn't get it exactly right or the uh, placement, because again, we can always adjust that with our, uh, with our transform panel or our transform properties. So with the second line created, Again, whether you copied or pasted, fantastic, doesn't really matter. Go and select it. You want to do a couple things here. A, let's go and verify that the length is still the same size, 6.625, which it is. Our stroke still remains 4 point. If yours isn't, go ahead and adjust that now. Now, for the type, though, this one's a little bit different. Since the top line goes from thick to thin, we want this one to go from thin to thick. So inside of our type, again, you can select that in a couple different places. Properties panel to the right of the point right there. Or inside your control panel up here. For screen space, I'm just going to choose this one up here. We're going to change this to be thin, thick. This way, the thin line is on top and thick is on the bottom. This helps sort of get a repeating pattern here. Thick, thin, thin, thick. All right, so with the line still selected, the next thing we want to do is we want to basically um, add a triangle to the far end. So let's open up our properties panel. And take, let me move this over. I want to show you something that we can do with this. There's an easier way to do this. All right, so with the properties panel. Now keep in mind, if you look at the dimensions mentioned inside the study guide, they're the exact same as the previous line, but the arrow is on the left side. So you can do one of two things. So open up the stroke. You can come down here if you want to and add a start triangle, change it to 60%. Oops, I hit enter and it closed it up. Let me open up stroke again. And over here for the right arrow to get rid of that one, just simply select the end arrow head and change it to none. That'll get rid of it. If I deselect, that's what we have. Now to show you another way that you could have done that, let me, since it's the exact same line, with the line selected, I can go back to my stroke panel and notice this arrow key right here. 
It says swap, start, and end arrowheads. So if I click that, it's going to switch the places. So that's kind of an easier way to do it, especially if you're doing the exact same thing. And since both arrowheads are the same size, they worked out perfectly. Deselect, so we've got our first few elements already in place. And press Control-0 on my keyboard to put everything into perspective so we can see the whole page. And the next thing we want to do is we want to add a center line right here down the middle. So I'm going to come over here to my toolbar, select the line tool, and I'm going to click and drag. Again, hold down the shift key to keep it as a straight line. And I know roughly it's supposed to end somewhere above the, uh, the gray rectangle. So I'm just going to roughly draw one out. Now notice, when I drew this, notice my colors. I have a fill but no stroke. So if I deselect this right now, you're not going to see the line. It's still there, but you just can't see it. So to find it, whenever you move your arrow over elements, notice the little black icon that appears in the bottom right below the arrow. So if I hover over in the, between the middle, you'll notice it's right there. So click on it, and I've now got it selected. And now I need to basically switch my colors from fill to stroke. So inside of my toolbar, I'm going to slide down here, and I'm just going to click the swap. Now I have a black stroke. All right, so now let's select the element again, and let's go ahead and make our adjustment. So this particular line needs to have a length of 5.65. I'm going to change the L to 5.65, hit enter. It needs to have a stroke of three points. I can type that in here, hit enter. And it needs to be solid. And this is already set to solid. If we open this up, you can see that it's currently selected. All right, so the next thing we want to change is the color of our stroke. So let's go over here to our swatches panel. And again, we want to make sure that we have the stroke selected, which is the one underneath the fill. So click on that. And let's adjust that to 20%. And finally, let's go ahead and make sure it's in the right location. So I'm going to close out the swatches panel. And in this particular case, if I bring up the properties panel, we want to make sure that we select the center reference point. Let's click on that. And our X value needs to be 4.25. So this is the center of our 8.5 by 11 document. Again, X is left and right. And the center of our document, if it's 8.5, will be 4.25. That's right. You're going to have to know how to do a little bit of math. And for our Y value, that needs to be set to 4.575. 4.575. And there you go. All right. So let's go and add our wavy line right here in between these two paragraphs. Again, it's a great way to use line to help separate information. Close out my properties panel for just a moment. Come over here to my um, selection tool. Drop down here to the line tool. Click on it. I'm just going to draw a line between these two paragraphs. From left to right, I'm going to click, hold down the shift key to keep it straight, and drag out my line. When I'm done, I'm just going to let go. And you're going to notice that every now and then you see these green lines pop up. Those are the smart guides in action. Basically saying the right edge of this line is lining up with the right edge of this paragraph. So I'm going to let go of that. Now again, notice there's no it's not showing up. That is because if we look at our colors, I have a black fill but no stroke. So I need to swap these. So right here inside my toolbar, I'm just going to do swap, fill, and stroke. And now it's a little bit thicker. So let's zoom in on that as well. Take my zoom tool and just sort of zoom in there. All right. And now I'm going to go back to my selection tool. And inside my properties panel, we're going to change the length of this to be three, well, which it is already. If yours isn't, just go ahead and adjust it from that point on. For the stroke, we're going to change this to 10 point. Now I know it's going to look really thick, but trust me, you're going to want to do that for wavy lines. So we're going to adjust that to 10. I know it looks super thick. Don't worry, that's going to dramatically change here in just a second. For the type, we're going to click our drop down and we're going to choose wavy. And notice what happens to that very thick stroke. It becomes a little bit thinner. Make sure we have it at 100% black, which we do. And finally, we need to put it in its right location. So we're going to select the left reference point over here. And for our X value, we want to make sure it's sitting at 4.5, which it is. If not, just type that in, 4.5, hit enter. And then our Y value is, I like this, it's 4.1878. I'm going to hit enter. 
basically I ended up just centering it between these two paragraphs. Let's close this out and see a little bit better what's happened. All right, and let's zoom out just a bit more so we can kind of see it. So basically, we've added a line in between these two paragraphs, perfectly centered. Looks good. All right, so let's scroll down here to the bottom. And finally, we're basically going to add a stroke around this rectangle shape. So in this particular case, we don't have to draw a line. We just have to select the actual shape. So select the gray shape. And just so you know, if you don't select it right, if you select the wrong thing, you may end up selecting the paragraph. So you don't want to select on the text. You want to select off to the side of the text um, inside the gray area. That way you select the actual shape. So make sure it is the only thing selected. Okay, and to add a stroke to this rectangle box, come over to your properties panel. If we come down, notice we currently have a fill, but we have no stroke. So to easily add a stroke, just come over here to where your point size and just add, let's see, in this case it needs to be three, hit enter. We now have a solid line around it. Now, according to our document, it needs to be a dash line. And so we can do that by coming over to our stroke and then coming over here to the type, opening it up, and then selecting dashed, uh, let's see, three and two. That's what you get. All right, that looks good. And finally, let's go ahead and add a line at the very bottom of our document. It's gonna be easy enough. Come over here to your toolbar, click on the line. And instead of drawing from left to right, let's go ahead and draw from right to left. Basically what we're doing is we're gonna draw a line from the right side of our margin, basically all the way to the line. Now in this particular case, you notice I've been working without all those guides from before. That is because inside my view, I am working inside the screen mode of preview. And if we go back to normal, normal will show you all the guidelines and the outlines of all your elements. So it's kind of a preference thing. Either way, doesn't matter. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from the right to the left. So click and drag. Again, hold down the shift key. It's going to keep your line straight and just draw a line. And again, because I told you I'm prone to do this, notice I have a fill but no stroke. So before I click off of this object, I'm going to simply swap the colors. So I swapped the black fill to the black stroke, and there I have it at the bottom. Now this particular one is easy to do because it has a uh, one point stroke, which is what we have, and it's basically just a solid type, so it's already drawn that. However, what we do wanna do is go and fix our length. So I'm gonna come over here inside my properties panel, inside my L, which stands for line length, I'm going to type in 5.0567, hit enter. And then for the placement, I'm going to select the right center reference point. Basically I'm saying I wanna basically line this up starting with this point over here. This is gonna be my reference point. So over here I've got 7.667, I'm gonna hit enter. Oops, there should be another six in there. 7.667. Oh, that's not good, triple sixes. Hit enter. And then for the Y value, this needs to be 10.5. And so basically what we're doing here is, let me deselect that. And let me go back to my preview mode. A view, screen mode, and preview. Basically what we've done, just so you can kind of see the reason behind the thinking is, let me hide this real quick. So what I've done is I have aligned the right edge of this line with the right edge of this box. And then, so that, again, that's your X value. For my Y value, I've aligned the middle, I've aligned this line with the middle, or roughly the middle, of this term right here. Lines can be helpful in pointing you to important information. So in this particular case, it sort of helps draw your eye back to the title of the magazine. All right, so control zero, looks fairly good. Mm -hmm.